Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, another Tech Talk session on the Thursday morning. Rather chilly where we are. Uh, I'm sure the rest of the country uh, also battling the cold. So hopefully today's uh, Tech Talk, which we're going to be talking CPD. Uh, Lorraine obviously heads up CPD department in terms of PIRB. And, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that uh, trying to bring some different uh, ideas and some share information. So today's topic is going to be on one that's been a, quite a debatable point right throughout uh, the inception of CBD. And I think today is uh, one to just basically get a better understanding of CPD to get an understanding of the reasons why. And um, yeah, let's have a, a discussion around these things. I think Lorraine's going to explain in detail in terms of um, where CBD is, um, you know, who heads it up, um, you know, is it just one person? So. Let, let's open it up for discussion. Let Lorraine go through these details. And then, uh, guys, ladies, questions, uh, we welcome them. And uh, let's kick it off. Lorraine, are you all up and ready and ready to rumble? Uh, yes, I am. Good morning, everybody. Um, I am uh, Lorraine Moy. I'm the CPD manager at PRB. Um, I'm a licensed plumber. I'm an officer compliance auditor as well. So, in terms of CPD, uh, my team and I, it is myself, and I've got two ladies that work with me, and our team, Janae. I also have a CPD committee, uh, which Steve is part of, um, Ardern Maybach, uh, what's it, Richard Bailey, Mahin. So, I've got, there's two different things that I deal with. So, the CPD activities, and also, obviously, running of CPD in general. And the thing that I get asked, a lot. I mean, myself, my team is, what is CPD? Why? Why do I have to do CPD? And as a professional, you have to invest in yourself as a professional. And I remember there was a, a, a gentleman that uh, came into the office the one day and said, I don't see myself as a professional. I said, you are a professional. We are plumbers. And because of that, there is certain, there's certain things that you need to do. To remain, to remain a professional. So um, the CPD process is that it's continuous professional development. So you as a professional have to continuously develop yourself. And there's, there's different ways. There's obviously yourself that you invest in. There is also the mentoring of the next batch of professionals. And there's also giving back because not everything is about you as an individual. And I get a, a lot of, I've, you know, at lastminute.com, the guys are asking, how can I get these 25 points? You have a year. Your renewal period is a year. My one runs from the 11th of February to the 11th of February the next year. So I've got 12 months to accumulate my continuous professional development points. And then the other thing that happens is a couple of years ago, before I joined PRB, uh, I got a letter that said you only have, I think it was only four CPD points. If you don't get your CPD up to date, you will be recategorized as qualified. And at that point, you know, I blew my top and I phoned PRB and I got on my high horse. And uh, I remember the guy that I spoke to, I said to him, it's impossible that I cannot wear my points for this and this and this and this. And he said to me, did you claim them? And in my mind, I, I had assumed that this was done automatically for me. And he said, no, you as the plumber, you need to claim points for certain activities. We get registers from service providers for certain things, like the tech talks that we do, like the tech talk we're doing today, we'll get a register from articulated. Um, and then we allocate from there. From IOPSA, we get a register from the meetings, we allocate from there. But for every other thing, from your COCs to learn a plumber, to being a member of, um, of a committee, all of that, you need to claim those points yourself. We don't automatically do it. And another thing, in terms of these tech talks, toolbox talks, and the business owner ones, you need to make sure that your registration number is in that little box, because that is how we allocate. We get a list this long, and what happens is that your registration number doesn't match up with the name on the thing, on the, the, on the register, so 
who are you? So it's imperative that all your details are correct. Because what happens is that we get calls in, the guy says, it's impossible, I have more, I've, I've watched all these things and we have to go through the list again and only to find out your secretary was the one who was, that's her name, that's on the list, not yours. Another question we always get is, how long is my cycle? It is 12 months. You've got 12 months from renewal date to your next renewal date to do your CPD, 12 months. And a lot of guys tell me that I don't have the time, I don't have, it's impossible. If you're doing an activity a month, by the time you get to the end of the year, you're already sorted. I've got guys that from January of this year, January, February, March, that are already CPD compliant for the 2021 cycle. Because all they did was the COVID sessions, they attended those, they attended the tech talks, they submitted some other activities, and now they're sitting on average 30 points each. And then I get told everything costs money. And that's not true. You've got the tech talks, the business 101, the toolbox talks, those are all free. 0 0.25 points, so if you watch them diligently in a month, you get one point a month. If you watch them consecutively for four months, each of those, you've got 12 points already. Not everything costs money. Your mentoring a learner plumber costs is five points a year. That's whether you've got one or more, it's only five points a year. Charity is four points, but we're going to go down the breakdown a little bit later on. But not everything costs money. I can get you to 25 points without spending a cent. Um, and then our carrying over of points. So you can carry over 33 and a third percent of your CPD points. But even then, you are capped at five points a year. So whether you, you've gone over and above by 40 points, you will only carry over 33 and a third, which is a maximum five points only in a year. Because the next year, you then have to accumulate, or plus that, and your renewal, you'll have seven points, so you only need to accumulate 18 points. But I'm not going to give you... 33 and a third percent of 20 percent or 30 percent or 30 points it's it's in the policy um, if you want a copy of our policy you can find it on our website and the cpd you'll find it there and then i get asked why can i only claim eight points for all my cocs coc is a work-based activity so work-based activity and individual activities you can only get 50 percent of your cpd from there Developmental activities, which are these tech talks, um, the meetings, those are not capped at all. You can get all your points from there, but for CSCs, maximum is eight points. So each year for so each batch of CSCs, it's 15 CSCs is equal to one point. So 120 CSCs maximum is what we are able to give you. Then just so I might connect with a bit though. And you know, I get calls from, uh, as I was looking at the, the guys that are attending, I was like, I know actually quite a few of you because I've spoken to you at some given time. And the first thing is, you know, the guy you call, you upset because we've recategorized you or whatever it is. And like I said, my team and I are just here to assist you. I get that um, you're not, less people say they don't have enough time, they're just so busy and whatever it is, but as a professional, you need to invest in yourself. You need to make sure that you keep abreast of what's going on. Um, as a compliance auditor, what happens is that, you know, you go to an audit and you think by now that the guy would understand and you'd know what's going on, but that's not the case. And we get calls of why are you always repeating the geezer? Why, 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 why? If, if we were getting 100% for all the audits, if we were getting, you know, we we're not getting these atrocious installations, we wouldn't have to repeat things over and over. But we have to, because for every one guy who gets it, there's a hundred that don't get it. And that is the reason why we have to continuously drill this into everybody's mind. Then I get asked, nobody told me about CPD. On the application form that you sign, it states there, licensed plumber, 25 CPD points a year. We are working on our communication. My, my team and I send out a communication to all plumbers, three months, prior to their renewal, so that you know. We then send it again two months, and we send it a month a month prior to that as well. Should you renew early, what we do is that we send you a letter saying, you're sitting at this amount of points, you need to get to that point by your renewal date. That's the cutoff. And after that, we have to recategorize you because you're not CPD compliant. But even then, we try hard that we make sure that the guys that are sitting at 20, 21 points, we just want to push you over the line and make sure that you get to your points. Even the guys that are sitting at two points, we send you a formula, a breakdown, and we say to you, 
do these things, send it to us as soon as possible, and then we can reinstate you as a licensed plumber. Then I get asked how many points for each designation. Licensed plumber is 25 points. A master plumber is 35 points. And um, if I do something that's not on the CPD menu, will I still get CPD points? Yes, you will. As long as it's industry related, you can't go on a baking course and expect me to give you CPD points. It's not going to happen. Um, so anything that's industry related, health and safety, anything industry related, you can submit it to us. We will give you CPD points for it. If you are recategorized, all you're going to do, call into the office, send an email to one of myself or my assistants, and we will get you reinstated as soon as humanly possible. We look at what's going on, we ask you questions, are you doing this, what are you doing, and we try and get you to that point. Because for us, it's, I mean, I understand as a plumber, you're running around, you're trying to run a business, but this is also an integral part of you remaining in business, is that you need to make sure that you've made the investment in yourself. And then the favorite thing I get is uh, it's all a money making scheme from every department in this whole building. I don't make a cent. I don't make a red cent from all of this. All I have to do is I will, all I do is uh, try to make sure that everybody is you getting to a point where your CPD is up to date. That's all. How you how I do it is that we try and tell you we actually send everybody a breakdown. Like please just do this and we can sort you out. But I don't make not a red cent. We don't make any money at CPD. Even the CPD assessments, I don't make money from that. So that's another thing I get asked is, can I do the assessment? The assessment is a once-off. Ladies and gents, it's a once-off. If you've done the assessment in the past, you're not going to do the assessment again. And also, my assessment, 75% pass mark. If you get less than that, you have to redo the assessment and pay again for the assessment. And as well, if you um, if you have, uh, if you ask, if you want to do the assessment, you have to have done CPD prior, the prior year. You're not allowed to do your CPD assessment the first year. I will. You have to have done it for the, the year prior. So what, I've, what I'm putting on the screen is my formula for 25 point breakdown without spending any money. This is in a year. So if you attend um, a, the Business 101 consecutively for three months, the toolbox talks consecutively for three months and the tech talks consecutively for three months for four months that's 10 points in those four months you then mentor a learner plumber that's another five points so you're looking at 15. you do charity work that's another four points if you do charity work on world plumbing day which is the 11th of march every year that's double points if you read the Plumbing Africa magazine and you have to complete all 11 quizzes for you to be eligible for the two points. Subscribe to Plumbing Africa magazine online. That's free. And then obviously your renewal. That all gets, that gets you to 25 points without spending a cent. So that's just the end of my, my spiel. Should you, does, do I have any questions? Yeah, I think Lorraine, just to touch on where we are while the questions come through. And I think that, you know, it's just to emphasize that, you know, obviously we're, we're very involved with the, the plumbers. And if I take an example, we were up in Vita a couple of weeks ago, um, where some of the plumbers were concerned with regards to, you know, their, their, their points and, and, and things like that, is that, you know, when we actually sit and go through it, and the guys through the activities, as you've just shown, are, are basically there. It's just the logging and maybe the understanding or the not understanding of, of the, you know, where they need to log them and everything else. And I think the key emphasis is obviously communication. A lot of the, the, the queries that you get and the team gets and is that it's always at lastminute.com. So when you've notified the individual three months prior to that, and nothing happens until the day, you know, of of the new cycle. Uh, that's when you know people seem to wake up. And I think it's important, you know, for all in attendance today, is to watch that. You know, is to watch where you are to make sure that your points are uh, accumulated. To also ask the question with regards to any training courses that you're doing or going on or, or uh, a manufacturer's training. And ask the question, you know, is the CPD accredited? Uh, I think the one point that you raised, uh, Lorraine, was that, um, you know, the manufacturers can, you know, submit their training material to be accredited for CPD. And again, it's time-based. 
and you know that could be outside you know being delivered at their premises or you know at the, the factory or whatever the case may be so there's many opportunities to be able to obtain it and i think it's just you've done it very well in terms of explaining um you know in terms of, of how you can actually get it but i think you know we are professionals you know we are a professional body and I think the key thing is that, you know, it, one of the, the, the points from SACWA, which is the South African Qualifications Association, was that it is a requirement of the professional body to have CPD. Um, in terms of, of where I sit and the information that comes through, if I go and look at some of the courses and the costs that come up, I mean, some of the, uh, uh, the architects and engineers, uh, one point equates to eight hours uh, in terms of that. So in terms of our time base, um, when you look at other associations and things, uh, you're sitting at about eight hours equates to one point. Uh, there was one workshop up in Santon where, um, you know, the cost was, was astronomical. But, you know, when you look at the time amount spent, it was like 16 hours to accumulate. I think it was two points. So I think we, we're trying where we are. It's certainly not perfect. Uh, and we certainly are open to suggestions that would come through to the, the CPD committee. So, um, yeah, that's just a good emphasis. Thanks uh, for that, Lorraine. And then, um, Karim, do we have any questions or are we silent? Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Lorraine. And uh, Steve, we've got quite a few questions this morning. And I see we've still got 13 minutes, so hopefully we can get through most of them. So this first one is uh, more of a statement. It says, it is important to note that although CPD is based over a year, it is a year from the date of your own renewal date. Every plumber has a different calendar year. Example, mine is from 16 June 2020 to 16 June 2021. It does not run from 1st of Jan to 31 December for everyone. 100% well done. I think the statement that was made there is, is, is spot on. So it's not from a January to January. It's, it's when you actually register, uh, Lorraine. Um, yeah, you covered that and it's very well put. Yes, very well put. And then the next, uh, this one is a question. Do I carry my CPD points to a new financial year or do they get forfeited? The carrying over the points. So anything above your 25 points that you've accumulated, you get 33 and a third percent. And like I said, it's kept at a maximum of five points a year. You don't, you'd only forfeit whatever was above that, but you only, you carry over 33 and a third percent. But I think also, Lorraine, is that, like you said <laughs> earlier, just to add there, you know, I think for those guys, certainly <clears throat> carrying those five points over. But I think it's 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 not like a bank where you're banking. I think anything that you do in terms of CPD uh, is going to add a, a huge amount of value to you. I mean, as Lorraine said, mm -hmm. uh, we see some terrible installations and, you know, we have people coming back and saying, why, why, why? And the most frustrating thing is that, you know, you've maybe had a talk the week before or you've done something and uh, you go to a job and it's totally incorrect and the guy says well how am I supposed mm -hmm. to know and, and where I think there's enough content out there so I think we it, we you know in terms of learning and you know being in this game for 100 years uh, I learn every day and I think that you know if we have to start accumulating points I think for me it's to be that sponge uh, that the, the points are a, a secondary mm -hmm. sort of add-on type of thing but is to try and obtain as much knowledge as possible and knowledge is power i think that when you go to sites and you see some of the plumbers that where they've got their add-on sales because they, they've kept themselves up to date with changes in industry that in itself from a monetary point of view applying what they've learned through whether it be the business 101 or the tech talks or whatever um there is is in is the value you know in terms of being able to upskill upsell and and be proud of what it is that you do because you've got knowledge is power Thanks. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. Uh, the next question is, if I'm a qualified plumber for 29 years and have my own company for 20 years, I have experience with small and very big projects. How do I register as a master plumber? All right. Um, so, do you want to pick that up or do you, are you happy? I was going to say, can I get the details of the individual so I can get the registrations department in contact with him? Because there's a, a process with that. Yeah. So just to touch on that, um, you know, for you guys that haven't seen the, the documentation that's coming out, there is a master plumber program. There's not too many plumbers that have registered as master plumber. 
Um, and uh, in the near future, in the next uh, month or so, I think we, we're setting up uh, LMS, which is a learner management system, where you know all of us are going to be plugged in. So as an example, all the 200 and odd attendees today, you know, we plugged into a system, and then uh, we'll be able to get that criteria out. So for that individual asking that question, certainly send it through to uh, Lorraine, and then we'll be able to unpack to you, you know, the process of becoming a master plumber. There are certain terms and conditions that apply, and uh, we'll be able to give that to you. But guys, just and ladies, look out for the LMS system in terms of where it is and how it's going to map out the programs for all in the plumbing industry. Thanks. Okay, perfect. And then the next question is, when will, we, when will we be able to check our CPD point status online in real time? Okay, um, I can answer that. Um, when the new system is launched, you'll be able to check it on your dashboard. So whatever task you've done, uh, it will come to my team, we'll approve or reject depending on the criteria. And then you'll be able to see that I'm sitting at 20 CPD points without having to call into us or email us. Okay, perfect. And then the next question is, what is the correct number to put in the block? Is it PIRB or the ID number that you send? Business Talk wants a PIRB number. For all of them, I require a registration number. So my registration is 42084 slash 13. I've always got to put in that's the, that's the number that I put in. So it's always that four digits plus the, obviously the six digits number you get from PIRB. Okay, and then the next question is, um, if I am short of uh, five CPD points on D-Day, what do I do? Um, make contact with us as soon as possible so we can sort it out. Um, it's five points we can get you there as soon as possible. It's very easily. So as long as we see that you've actually made an effort, please just contact us so we can help you get over the finish line. Yeah, I think also to add to that, Lorraine, is that, you know, again, um, mm -hmm. you know, for the plumber is to just make sure because you know again the experience that i've had and you know working with the team and everything else is that you know let's just be real the the object the objective of this is to ensure that everybody gets there and you know there are some guys mm -hmm. that when they phone in and they may be four or five sometimes eight points short and they've got valid reasons for for being you know short or whatever the case may be but when lorraine or the team sit and go through it and say okay what about oh yes i did that so so sometimes you might be five points short but in actual effect you know once you've opened mm -hmm. up into that communication that uh, you've actually got you know the five points by a sort of cpd uh, uh, uh point that uh, you've been doing maybe every day or whatever you haven't claimed it so the key thing for me is communication through all things you know let's not get heated and, and you know get out of hand because i mean that also does happen but i think if we can sit down and just go look this is where i am and and you know let's just be reasonable you know if you're sitting there and it's been a year and you've got three points you know don't expect that this magic wand to come down and just automatically give you 22 points i think you know it's based on each one on, on its own merit and also in the past, I mean, we've seen guys that have, you know, continuously had their points uh, up to date every year. And then there's just one year where they, they just don't make the halfway mark. But there's specific reasons for that. And it goes back down to communication. I think the objective is not to just go and, and demote somebody to qualify. I think the key thing is for us to be able to direct, guide and, and get individuals there. And it comes through that communication. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay. And then the next question is, uh, hi, thanks for the clarity. I work for the municipality and I try to watch the webinars every week. Sometimes I miss them because of the pressure at work. Then I watch them later on YouTube. How can I be compensated by watching on YouTube? There are assessments, sorry, yeah. Ryan, I'm jumping in again, but there are That's assessments fine. that get done on quite a large majority of them. Okay, some of the, like the Q&A sessions, unfortunately, we can't prepare uh, questions for a Q and A session, um, and you know because we just don't know what questions are going to be coming up. But for those business one on ones, um, they are an assessment at the end of it. So bearing in mind, you know, watching it live, we can see the attendance, we can see, um, you know, how many people are switching it on, having coffee and playing darts, you know, in the background. Um, but you know, in terms of of the YouTube, I mean, we've got no idea in which to do that. So you can do the assessment where the assessment is. 
And, um, you know, with that, it just gives the clarity in terms of uh, knowing that you have listened to the 20 minutes and you've answered the assessments and you do get the points for that. Okay, perfect. And then the next question is, how were we supposed to have accumulated CPD points if you had no work for most of the year, especially in this lockdown period? So I think, um, sorry, Lorraine, I'm, I'm a bull again. Do you want to answer that? No, you can take it, Steve. All right. So I think that, you know, you know what we did was, you know, from PIRB and IOPS, uh, you know, we realized then that with COVID coming down in March, that there was going to be a challenge. And that challenge is that, you know, yes, there would be no work and, um, you know, the guys would be sitting at home. So therefore, as Lorraine said earlier, um, what we did as a concerted effort was to up the amount of uh, webinars that were done. And bearing in mind, I think there was as many as four a day that it would be done um, to cover all aspects of plumbing. Uh, we had Debbie with her, um, uh, just her, her, her sort of uh, business uh, mentorship, et cetera, et cetera. So as Lorraine said, if you had basically attended those or watched the, um, uh, what do you call it, the, 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 the recordings or whatever the case may be, you'd be way over the line as it is. So yes, we understand that. And again, I think if you if you put your case forward and you couldn't do this, then, then put it through to Lorraine and the team and let them have a look at it. But I think that the amount of content that was shared and that was out there in terms of that um, certainly circumvented the guys in terms of sitting at home doing nothing. And I, from the reports that we got, it, it was phenomenal in terms of, of uh, the feedback from all sectors saying well done to IOPS and PIOB and the teams that put these things together. So yes, there were certainly um, a lot more activities during that time in order to uh, for the licensed plumber to obtain points. Just to add on to that, like, like I said earlier, I've got a lot of guys that, um, that are renewed January, February, March and even April that were able to obtain all their CPD have allowed them to do that so they can gain their points um, so that individual can get in contact with us at the office and we'll assist him how we can okay thank you for that uh, the next question is are you saying that we can get cpd for charity such as doing work at church etc yes plumbing work for free charity work you can get cpd yeah, I think also, as Lorraine said, for World Plumbing Day, you'll find a lot of the regions, you know, do some tasks and during the course of the year, they'll help at schools. I know IOPS has done a few things up in Gibbsworth and everything else. So collectively, you're getting together, um, you know, working for the common goal to contribute back to society. In Durban, we've just recently and still busy finishing off an old age home. Um, you know, so there's a lot of activities out there that you'll get from IOPSA and from the local guys. They'll keep you up to date in terms of what activities they've got and what's on the cards. And they, you know, in terms of the double points that come through in terms of that, so long as it's done in the correct format. Okay, perfect. And then the next question is, if we register and complete the solar and heat pump course offered by Articulate, uh, past the online assessment, are we able to sign off COCs? Okay, so Lorraine, you want to jump or you want to leave it here? All right, so let me just answer that one. So any course that you do, and so let's just go through whether it be heat pump, uh, 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 solar, whatever the case may be. Um, it doesn't necessarily also have to be done through Articulated, which is online, but you can also do it with any other the accredited training providers. Um, the one that's currently on at the moment, if you submit your training material to the CPD committee, they will accredit it and apply the CPD points for that. On completion of that course that you've done, whether it be heat pump, whether it be solar, uh, you will get an attendance certificate, okay, which means that you've actually attended it, you've completed the assessments that have been done in line with the training that you have uh, carried out. You will then take that certificate that you receive and send it through to IOPSA. IOPSA do not give the qualification. IOPSA will provide the designation that in terms of you being the licensed plumber, you will do the assessment that, that's actually done. So it's, it's an online practical, sorry, uh, uh, assessment that's done. 
And based on your performance with that regard, if you pass that, then automatically it would go through to PIRB. Uh, they will amend your certificate. Then you have the designation in order to be able to sign off whichever designation you've done, whether it be heat pump or solar. There is a cost to that, okay? So it is a double assessment, but again, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes to make sure that all things are valid. Uh, we've been going back to quite a few times, you know, we've got to go back five, six, seven years uh, to try and verify certificates. So there is a way in which to do it, but just to be clear, um, you will not have a qualification, okay? You will have the designation uh, in order to be able to sign off certificates of compliance for heat pump or solar. Perfect. Thank you very much. I'll just read out uh, one last question for the session. Uh, so the question is, how many learner plumbers can I mentor? Um, I've done. Okay. Lorraine, are you here or did we lose you? I'm, I'm here. Um, learner yeah. plumbers, you can mentor as many as you would like, but you only get five points a year for whether it's one or more. That's the only points you'll be able to claim on a yearly basis is five points. So you don't get five points per learner you get five points as a collective of all your learners. Okay, perfect. I believe that's it uh, for the questions for this session. All the, the remaining questions will be answered uh, via email. I'd just like to read out a few of the positive uh, feedback comments. A job well done with clearing up uh, these murky waters and for clarifying the whole CPD process. So thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to add before I end off, Lorraine or Steve? Yeah, um, I, think, I just want to say thank you for everybody for attending. Yeah, I think, uh, Kareem, again, thank you very much for your behind the scenes and support there. You know, I, without you, we'd be a little bit snookered. But I just want to thank all in attendance today. And if there are any other questions that you need, uh, please just get hold of Lorraine and the team or if you want to give me a chat. But I think the emphasis, I really want to thank everybody for a very productive uh, 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 webinar this morning. I think it's been very proactive in terms of answering the questions. And again, we are an open book in terms of any questions, queries, and assistance. The team is here to support you. And just to thank you very much and have a great day.